So I've recently discovered that a side effect of falling in love with your life is that death gets all the more horrifying uh, when you're actually happy to live. Uh, my sister called the other day to tell me that her grandmother-in-law is dying. She had been given a choice between a skeptical surgery, uh, probably wouldn't work, or an inevitable one-week death. One week. There's a chance, they say, that maybe, you know, her body could cling to something here and keep her breathing for maybe a month. But the reality is, is that today, a man stood above her and said, you will be dead within a week. Um, a man with a stethoscope and a sterile coat. A man paid really well to know that sort of thing. And so today I lie in our bed next to you on a sunny but chilly November afternoon, feeling the steady rise and fall of your chest against the side of my face. A cheery electronic song about a hypothesized apocalypse is spinning on the turntable. You have fallen back asleep, but I stare wide awake at the stream of sunlight falling on your face, illuminating a softness in your cheeks and flecks of gold in your hair. I'm focusing on each individual strand on the red coming into your beard as a careful method of avoidance. I am currently ignoring all the obvious signs of my father's relapse. I am currently trying not to think about the woman who worked her way through New York City with a piece of chalk marking the place to which the river will rise in 20 years, 15 years, 10 years, my lifetime. When did I become so willfully ignorant? When my sister told me about her husband's grandmother, all of the standardized phrases came out. Oh, 86, well, at least she's lived a full life, as if there is a numeric measure of fullness. I'm currently trying not to devote too much focus to figuring out if I can actually imagine an age in which the certainty of my own rapidly approaching death would not be horrifying. I can't imagine any age at which that would be easy. My own grandmother, 83, she speaks of death with a scowl and a sarcastic inevitability that betrays an urgent desire to live, to not be left out, to be here for whatever is coming. The last time we spoke, she reminded me that I never call her. And then I wondered, who the fuck will call me when I'm 83? If I have enough fortune to make it that far, because really dying in a hospital at 80 something, dying anywhere at 80 something, is a luxury too many are not afforded as this year has been so kind to remind us again and again. Most days I can successfully ignore it, on rare days even process it maybe, but sometimes it still flips my stomach over as I try not to wonder if the next five decades of my life will pass by as quickly as the first three have. Instead, I'm currently imagining the bed that we're on floating on the angry orf offshoots of the Atlantic. The Hudson River by now has expanded to cover all of Staten Island and the outer perimeter of Manhattan, while the East River is spreading over Astoria, rolling in from the west, and Jamaica Bay seeps up from the south. The edges of this nameless body have settled in a decidedly stream-like residence on my block, but everyone still calls it the river. Everywhere is the river. Central Queens has proved at last useful a refuge, an outpost, but for me it's still just home. I've heard reports that there's a similar thing happening in parts of the Bronx, and it makes me wonder what has happened to all those animals we locked up in the zoo. My palm rests against your wrist, and the steady pulse of you anchors us here, and I do not float away. I feel a surge in my chest of ardent gratitude. So with the waters rising all around us, me, I climb out of bed and wade waist deep to the stereo to flip the record to the other side. Thank you. Wow. Thank you.